And it's just by incident that we move on with another couple. Uh, Christa Sommerer is here, and uh, her partner, uh, Laurent Mignognon, was not... Uh, thought that he could come too, but he decided very quickly, uh, yesterday or today, I don't know exactly, that he has to show up and uh, wants to be here on our uh, community meet and greet. So I'm very happy that both of you will join here, or will join the stage now. Christa started as a biologist, and um, so you can often find uh, simulations of artificial life in, in her, their computer-based interactive works. So interactivity, that's the main subject of the two. And uh, visitors can interact with these artificial uh, life forms, and they can influence it. So this is really wonderful. And uh, Krista is also a professor now for media at the university, at the Art University in Linz, in Austria. So I'm very happy that the two uh, will come here and show some parts of your work and your ideas and your world, uh, artificial world that is happening in reality. Thank you so much, uh, Susanne, and also thank you to Doro and all the wonderful organization. It's a fantastic opportunity to be here, and we are really excited to be among so many pioneers and see their lectures, and it's a wonder wonderful uh, two, two days here. Um, here we have prepared uh, a photo of a meeting uh, that took place at the 90th birthday uh, of Herbert W. Franke in the wonderful house uh, of uh, you in Bavaria. Uh, where I was uh, invited back then with our son. And I took this photo, I, I actually Susanne took this photo, and I think we can see here also Herbert W. Franke how vivid and active and really like ex full of energy he, he was at that time. And um, at that time uh, Herbert also, um, you know, uh, showed us uh, his programming. He was still programming with 90 years old up in his attic, and we were really perplexed about how someone his age could have so much energy and ideas and, you know, keep making new artworks. And uh, at that time, we also started a new series called the Portrait on the Fly Portrait Series. And uh, I took some pictures of Herbert, and he immediately agreed to be part of this project. And later, when the project was ready, we were able uh, to give it to him as a plotter portrait. This is Herbert W. Franke. Uh, as, uh, as a portrait made with lots of flies from this fly series. Actually, Laurent made uh, the plotter drawing. And uh, it also became an NFT mint. And we were so happy to hand it over to Herbert, and it's now in the collection, uh, when he had his big solo show at the Francisco Carolinum in Linz in 2022. And we see here also Annika Meyer, also Susanne Pech, Laurent, myself, and also the curator, Genoveva Rückert from the Oberösterreichische Landeskultur. And this was, I think, the last time I saw Herbert W. Franke. And yes. uh, it was a fantastic exhibition, and I'm sure we will hopefully hear more about this wonderful exhibition he had in Linz. So thank you, Herbert, for inspiring generations of media artists and paving the way for all of us. And I think we have heard it in the previous presentation how much influence he also had on so many uh, of the people practicing now. And and in the future. Uh, what we would like to show you now is uh, some examples of our artworks. And uh, most recently, we had a very large uh, retrospective exhibition uh, that has been touring now to four different cities. It was at the ZKM in Karlsruhe, it was in uh, Linz, in uh, OK Center, during Ars Electronica, then it was at Imal in Brussels, and most recently, it was at the Ascuna Centroa in Bilbao. And the exhibition, is called The Artwork as a Living System, and based on the late curator Karin, Karin Ollenschläger, which I'm sure some of you also uh, know quite well, uh, Karin approached us uh, in 2019 with this idea of putting up a retrospective of our artworks, mostly interactive artworks that deal with artificial growth, evolution, generative design, and A-life. And I'm actually so happy that we could see William Latham's work before, who gave us already a wonderful introduction of what is A-life, what is generative graphics, what is evolution. 
So I don't really need to explain this anymore. I think you, uh, you know this already. Uh, so many of our works are dealing with this idea of evolution and artificial life, but linked mostly to interactivity. And Karin and also Peter Weiber, who unfortunately also deceased, and Alfred Weidinger were so kind to put up the money for this big retrospective and make a co-production. And uh, Laurent and myself were able to restore many of our 16 plus artworks from the last 32 years. And uh, I will show you now some examples of these artworks. This was at the Ascuna Centroa uh, recently, just a few weeks ago. This is, for example, in the atrium of the Ascuna Centroa. We have an interactive piece where you see a very large screen. And as people walk around underneath the screen, they see themselves on the screen in black and white. And many flies, digital flies, are following them. And they cover all these people with flies. So it's a very easy to use piece, and even a bit incidentally, you become part of the artwork, and you might uh, suddenly discover that you are covered by all these flies, and this is exactly what we like with interactivity. Something that sort of involves you quickly in the artwork, and the artwork uh, becomes alive, as we call it, like a living system. Okay. Uh, then the next, uh, here I show you a few examples. Uh, this is in the middle, we have an interactive screen where people are also making themselves, uh, make a portrait of themselves made out of many flies. I think 10,000 flies you said uh, you programmed that are like pixels moving ahead around and then create your portrait. And then we also have digital portraits here on the right hand side, Peter Weibel and the left hand side, uh, Karin Ullenschläger, who uh, were greeting the visitors here in the installation. Uh, here I just show you from the interactive uh, model Lots of flies are moving around on the screen, and once they detect an outline, we'll see that in a minute here, once they detect an outline, they start to create the portrait of people, and it's actually the people's movements in front of the screen that uh, uh, helps to uh, make these flies to organize themselves as to sit down, stay still, and then uh, create your outlines. You will see it in a minute. This is our son a couple of years ago where he's moving in front of the screen. And all these little dots that you see are little flies that are uh, moving around and create, create the portraits. And uh, we have exhibited, uh, exhibited this work really a lot. And each time we really see that people are becoming uh, quite engaged in it and also improvise with it. And uh, like I think we've seen it with Monica and Wolfgang, I think this idea of making a selfie uh, is also something that's uh, quite fascinating to visitors, and we love this idea of interactivity and interaction. Let's move on. Uh, this is a series that's still ongoing, and actually some of uh, you in this audience have kindly already participated, like Frida Nake, whose portrait is up there, then also Roger Malina, there's also Victoria Vesna, Christiane Paul, uh, uh, Tomoe Moriyama, Mashiko Kusahara, and many others. So what we do is we use this fly software and we put the portrait of people into the software and then create big prints made out of the software. And I'm also very happy to tell you that we also have one of uh, Mr. Dellinger, but it's not shown here. So this is also, and if you want to be part of this portrait series, please let us know and we take your picture here and then transform them later into fly portraits. Uh, this is uh, an, from the exhibition in Ascuna Centroa. We see a large screen here in the background with plants hanging in the front, and uh, people can touch the plants and then grow plants on the big screen. It's a very large vaulted screen. In front, we have also an older work from the 90s called Life Species, where you can create artificial life creatures by writing text. Uh, this is the plant installation uh, that was originally done in 2004 in Shise for Shiseido in Tokyo when we lived in Japan. Uh, and here is the new adaptation uh, that we made for this retrospective. And as you can imagine, I think here we have a lot of experts here. Uh, it's quite an effort to redo pieces, even though they are maybe just 20 years old or 30 years old but it's quite a challenge to actually restore pieces and reenact them and reconfigure those pieces. And we are very happy that we could do this for this retrospective. Here is a shot from the ZKM in Karlsruhe. 
Uh, I don't have the time to show you videos, but uh, the person here is touching real plants, and through this interaction, he or she can grow the plants on the screen. This is the original work from two, 1992, our very first interactive piece, also with plants, and as people approach the real plants and touch, uh, for example, the ivy or the fern or a little cactus, then they grow these images on the screen, and they are always different. The garden that you see on the screen is never the same. It really depends on the interaction difference between the real plant, or the tension difference between the real plant and the visitor. And this uh, very fine uh, voltage difference is leading the algorithm to grow always new garden images that people can enjoy and also erase and grow new ones. Then this is also quite a famous piece. We got the golden nika for it, the Evolf, which was also restored kindly with the help of the ZKM. It's also in their collection. Uh, here you have a pool filled with water. It's an A-life piece. And as people draw something on the touchscreen, they can afterwards see those little creatures. We call them creatures, but they look a bit like jellyfish. Uh, see them swim around in the pool, and you can also touch them. There's real water inside and you can play with them, but you can also see how they kill each other, how they propagate further, and uh, there's a kind of mini evolution going on uh, in this pool. And we are also very happy that thanks to the ZKM, this work could be restored. This is another work from 2002. Uh, the main objects are on the table here. They look like eggs. And when people hold these eggs in their hand, they exchange heartbeats. So the person here on the left feels the heartbeat of the person on the right, and she feels her heartbeat. And there is this kind of non-verbal communication happening uh, between these people. And uh, it's a quite intimate, almost a little bit erotic uh, form of communicating with each other non-verbally. Then here, this is also a piece that became very popular. It's a typewriter that Laurent transformed into a computer, so back from analog into digital and back into analog. Uh, it was a very uh, clever idea from Laurent where he uses a real paper as a screen and matches uh, the, the, the projection with the, with the uh, actual projection from the paper. And what you see when you type text, uh, you get little spiders or creatures, and the genetic code of these creatures is actually the text. I don't have time to go into it, but it's a lot of fun to really type text on this typewriter and uh, play with these creatures, uh, make them propagate. You can also kill them. So again, like in many of the other installations, a form of artificial life creation and uh, a form of uh, example of the artwork as a living system. Uh, this is also a work that has been restored recently called Haze Express. It's a train, win a train situation with real trains, uh, train seats from the Deutsche Bahn, <laughs> and a window, an interactive window. And as people touch the window, a generative les landscape appears that always changes uh, when people interact with the landscape. Uh, here, another work from uh, the early 90s, uh, a flashlight interface. Here, people light some light onto a screen, and little insects come out of the screen and they fly towards the light, and when they reach enough light, they can make children, they can reproduce, you get more and more insects, but it's not very easy to use. So also, this is nice for us to show this balance between life, taking care of life, and also being come responsible for this sort of very minute, delicate balance between the creation and the destruction of life. Uh, here, a more conceptual piece. Uh, this is called uh, The Value of Art. These are paintings that we bought at auction houses in Linz and in Vienna. A cat, for example, or a, a sea landscape. And it's quite a simple interaction. Here, we just installed a sensor that measures how long you look at the painting. And there's also a, a printer attached to it. And the printer prints out how long you looked at the painting. And every one uh, every 10 seconds of attention amounts to one euro of value increase. So at the end, uh, when we got back these uh, paintings from the exhibitions, uh, about uh, 40,000 visitors were at this exhibition, you can see that the value of this artwork increased tremendously. And of course, it's a bit of a 
virtual increase because we didn't sell this work for this money, but it's written down that I think now it's about, I forgot how much, but 80,000 euro. And the starting value of this painting was maybe 2,000 euro. So as so many people have increased uh, and looked at this work, now the virtual value of this artwork uh, is quite high. And the last work I want to show you uh, is more of a research project. It's an augmented reality project uh, that was uh, done in the frame of uh, archive uh, initiative that we have uh, with different universities. Uh, the Krems University where Oliver Grau was, also the Angewandte in Vienna and our university. It's a research project about archive. I think also a bit related to what Monica and Wolfgang did with the Netzspannung, but in a more based on our own personal archive. And what happens here is we scanned almost all the books that we have with our artworks inside, catalogs, uh, exhibition flyers, so a lot of data that we have from our personal archive. And you can navigate through this data with an augmented reality interface and see this data, these images, even 3D models of the installations and also uh, the, the texts and uh, catalog uh, materials navigate through it and uh, experience this archive in a sort of quite intuitive way. And uh, this is a project that's not completely finished. Uh, the idea is also to link it, of course, to other archives and also explore this option of how can we experience archives in the future in a, in a sort of way maybe fun way, but also in a very engaging way. And I think you had a very good term uh, before that I liked a lot. It was this experiential archive, I think was the term that uh, Wolfgang used. I have to talk about this. And uh, yeah, so it's of course the challenge about creating interactive works. They are always up and running when you exhibit them. And of course, that, as you can imagine, the technology is quite complex. So you have to keep, uh, you know, redoing them for each exhibition. On the other hand, the technology is also becoming, in a way, uh, more advanced and easier to handle. So I think there's also a very good way to restore older pieces from the early 90s and, you know, restage them and reshow them. And uh, this would, wow, I'm three minutes ahead of time. So, okay, maybe, <laughs> then, then maybe I can show you this book. We are also very happy that Peter Weibel, shortly before he passed away, he insisted very strongly that we also make a book uh, with the exhibition. And we are very happy that we could put all the artwork in this really beautiful MIT press book. So if anybody wants to see it later, please have a look here with wonderful articles by Peter Weibel, of course, Karin Ollenschläger, Richard Klusinski, Ingeborg Reichle, Birgit Mersmann, Silinski, Tomoe Moriyama, and Reinhard Kanonier. And since there's a bit of time left, I'll show you just here a small, uh, beautiful 30 minutes uh, VT documentary that was done uh, at Spanish television at Ascuna Centroa. It's online also, you can find it on YouTube but a very nice uh, TV show where they have interviews and also more detailed uh, information about all the pieces with different materials from the ZKM exhibition and also from the OK. Ah, here we see, for example, the A-Wolf. This is an old, old video from back then. Oh my God, we were young. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, here we see how these creatures are swimming. Here we see, for example, the typewriter, somebody typing and creating these little spider-like creatures. This was what I showed you already from the uh, big screen uh, in the Ascuna Centroa. And uh, it gives also, I think also what we have to think of is documentation when we do interactive works and also how to preserve these pieces, not only as the original and as restages, but also uh, in the way of documenting is as best as possible. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of our projects is also this portrait series. So if anybody wants a portrait made with uh, flies and become a digital fly portrait, please let us know. We are happy to include you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Uh, here another work from uh, the early 90s, uh, a flashlight interface. Here people light some light onto a screen and little insects come out of the screen and they fly towards the light and when they reach enough light they can make children, they can reproduce, you get more and more insects, but it's not very easy to use. So also this is nice for us to show this balance between life, taking care of life, and also being come responsible for this sort of very minute, delicate balance between the creation and the destruction of life. Uh, here, a more conceptual piece. Uh, this is called uh, The Value of Art. These are paintings that we bought at auction houses in Linz and in Vienna, a cat, for example, or a sea landscape. And it's quite a simple interaction. Here we just installed a sensor that measures how long you look at the painting. And there's also a, a printer attached to it. And the printer prints out how long you looked at the painting. And every one, uh, every 10 seconds of attention amounts to one euro of value increase. So at the end, uh, when we got back these uh, paintings from the exhibitions uh, about uh, 40,000 visitors were at this exhibition. You can see that the value of this artwork increased tremendously. And of course, it's a bit of a virtual increase because we didn't sell this work for this money. But it's written down that I think now it's about, I forgot how much, but 80,000 euro. And the starting value of this painting was maybe 2,000 euro. So as so many people have increased uh, and looked at this work, now the virtual value of this artwork uh, is quite high. And the last work I want to show you uh, is more of a research project. It's an augmented reality project uh, that was uh, done in the frame of an uh, archive uh, initiative that we have uh, with different universities. Uh, the Krems University, where Oliver Grau was, also the Angewandte in Vienna and our university. It's a research project about archive. I think also a bit related to what Monica and Wolfgang did with the Netzspannung, but in a more based on our own personal archive. And what happens here is we scanned almost all the books that we have with our artworks inside, catalogs, uh, exhibition flyers. So a lot of data that we have from our personal archive. And you can navigate through this data with an augmented reality interface and see this data, these images, even 3D models of the installations and also uh, the, the texts and uh, catalog uh, materials, navigate through it and uh, experience this archive in a sort of quite intuitive way. And uh, this is a project that's not completely finished. Uh, the idea is also to link it, of course, to other archives and also explore this option of how can we experience archives in the future in a, in a sort of very, maybe fun way, but also in a very engaging way. And I think you had a very good term uh, before that I liked a lot. It was this experiential archive, I think was the term that uh, Wolfgang used I have to talk about this. And uh, yeah, so it's of course the challenge about creating interactive works. They are always up and running when you exhibit them. And of course, that, as you can imagine, the technology is quite complex. So you have to keep, uh, you know, redoing them for each exhibition. On the other hand, the technology is also becoming, in a way, uh, more advanced and easier to handle. So I think there's also a very good way to restore older pieces from the early 90s and, you know, restage them and reshow them. And uh, this would, wow. I'm three minutes ahead of time. So, okay, maybe <laughs> then, then maybe I can show you this book. We are also very happy that Peter Weibel, shortly before he passed away, he insisted very strongly that we also make a book uh, with the exhibition. And we are very happy that we could put all the artwork in this really beautiful MIT press book. So if anybody wants to see it later, please have a look here with wonderful articles by Peter Weibel, of course, Karin Ollenschläger, Richard Klusinski, Ingeborg Reichle, Birgit Mersmann, Silinski, Tomoe Moriama, and Reinhard Kanonier. And since there's a bit of time left, I'll show you just here a small, uh, beautiful 30 minutes uh, video documentary that was done uh, at Spanish television 
at Ascuna Centroa. It's online also, you can find this on YouTube. But a very nice uh, TV show where they have interviews and also more detailed uh, information about all the pieces with different materials from the ZKM exhibition and also from the OK. Ah, here we see, for example, the Evolf. This is an old, old video from back then. Oh my God, we were young. <laughs> This, uh, yeah, here we see how these creatures are swimming. Here we see, for example, the typewriter, somebody typing and creating these little spider-like creatures. This was what I showed you already from the uh, big screen uh, in the Ascuna Centroa. And uh, it gives also, I think also what we have to think of is documentation when we do interactive works and also how to preserve these pieces, not only as the original and the three stages, but also uh, in the way of documenting is as best as possible. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of our project is also this portrait series. So if anybody wants a portrait made with uh, flies and become a digital fly portrait, please let us know. We are happy to include you.